This is Dr. Krauss, and I want to do a short video about encoder signals and how to read them using an Arduino. Some of my students seem to be struggling in our dynamic systems lab for this week, and I think part of the issue is that I did not require them to use an oscilloscope to observe the A and B channels coming out of the encoder, and as a result, I think they're more confused than they should be. I should have just made them do it. I thought I was saving us time. So, um, the key idea is that the output of an encoder is two square waves, uh, sort of like, I mean, these are, I'll talk about where these came from in a second, uh, but which of these goes up first and which of these comes down first uh, helps to, is the only way to tell the direction that the encoder is rotating. And then every time there's a rising or falling edge on either the A or B channel, you could say that the encoder has kind of ticked up or down one count. And so we cannot measure an encoder using analog read because there is no analog signal associated with it. We also can't measure using a digital read because just the voltage level has nothing to do with whether or not the encoder value should be changed. This is, you know, zero, this is five, this is zero, this is five. None of that is relevant. The fact that it reads five right now could mean that it's here or here or here or here has nothing to do with what value or how many times it has rotated or whatever. Now, because an Arduino only has two interrupt pins and we ultimately need to read two motors, we're not responding to both the A and B channels, but it's these rising edges or falling edges that we're trying to detect and at each edge, we've got to decide if we're rotating in the positive direction, in which case we increment our encoder count, or we're rotating in the negative direction, in which case we decrement our encoder count. So let me demonstrate this for a second. I've got an Arduino programmed to do an open loop pulse test. And so it's asking me for an amplitude if I give it a positive amplitude, and then a certain duration that I want that pulse to stay on. And I first tell my oscilloscope to wait for the trigger. My motor will turn, and then over here, so this was a positive input to the motor, and you can see that the top channel, which I'm gonna call channel A, or what my coder calls channel zero, A goes up first, B comes up later, A goes down first, B goes down later, A goes up first, B goes down later, A goes up first, B goes down later. So that is positive rotation, and the challenge in reading an encoder would be to recognize when this rising A edge happens, how do I decide if this is a positive or negative rotation? The opposite case then would be to come over here and say, I want to go in a negative amplitude pulse. I'm commanding the motor to rotate in the opposite direction. And then when it does, and I zoom in on my encoder signal, I now see that this bottom channel or channel one goes up first and then channel zero or channel A comes up second. Channel B goes down first channel A would go down at a later point in time, B goes up, A comes up later, B goes down, A goes down later. So the B channel is responding first, or this is a B leading situation, so B is leading A, and that would be considered negative rotation. Hopefully that helps.